Hello again. Here comes another lesson for you on Post Workshop Pro Edition. And I've been finding and discovering some new things in here, and I think you're going to be enjoying today's lesson. You won't believe what this can do. Uh, it, every time I work with this, I find something new. It is so much deeper than it looks and so much more controllable than it looks. So I just went to File, Load Image, and I loaded my Venice, um, my Venice Violin Player here. And now in the styles, I'm going to Building Blocks simple styles and I'm going to be choosing random painter right here now here's what's important when you go and drag this over put it over on this left side and you'll see that we've got this painted but what I want you to see is in the properties and preview look at all the choices we have we have the number of strokes and if you watch the changes it's on 3000 right now. You can see the changes that it's going to make. Let's go to less strokes. See, it didn't cover the canvas completely. Let's put it back close to what it was right now. This is the part I want you to see. See this, it looks like a brush stroke and it's a brush family. Click on browse and choose a different brush. So let's go to paintbrush two and go okay. And look, we have a different brush stroke. Let's choose another one. Let's go to Browse, and let's go to this round paintbrush. And I haven't done this one before. And look what we have. It looks almost like a sponge painting. And let's choose something from a different family. Let's choose, um, I haven't done this one either. So let's choose Palette Knife. And look at the differences in the Palette Knife. So let's choose this three, which looks sort of interesting. And if you want to, you can eliminate. You just uncheck if you don't want it to use those particular brush strokes. This one has quite a choice of brush strokes here, quite a variety of what you can use. So they call these bitmap brushes. So when you see the word bitmap in this program, it really is relating to brushes. And let's go OK. And you can see how different that one was. I'm going to back this out so you can see this. Now, what I really love is come back over here to current brushes and look, everything I used in order is here. So I can go back to my original brush, which is the one that I like the best. Now, I have choices and like it works in other paint programs, the smaller the brush, the more detail. So if I take this from 45 down and take the maximum brush down, See, we're going to start picking up something different here. So let's put this back up. And you can see as I'm moving, it's changing. Now, this is a nice feature, but you have to remember you have to always render your paintings in this program. We also have a color tolerance here, so we can up that. And if you saw, this color popped up a little bit more prominently. We have brush opacity, we have brush directions, and I'm sliding down here on the bottom. We have U-Jitter. Let's see what that does. No, I didn't really see a change in that one. Let's go to saturation. That's cool saturation there. So you can see when I raise the saturation, it changed the color quite a bit. Let's just go ahead and move that over again. And see, less saturation. Watch this area right in the middle here. And when I bring that back up, see, we have much more color there. So I could also do, if I wanted to, I've got a redo and an undo button. So I could go undo. I go to redo and zoom back in on that. So there's all that saturation that I just added. And we have a brightness jitter. Whoa, look what that does. Whew, maybe a little bit too much. Okay, and we have seed value. And you can see the changes that that's making. So you're able to, on the fly here, do these changes and change your brushes. So this is fairly amazing to me, uh, probably because I just discovered it. Now, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to back this out here, is I'm going to go back to my styles, and I'm going to go back to the building blocks, and I'm going to grab this emboss. And what this is going to do, you pull this in and put it on the right side, and this is going to give you your impasto look. And here's my preview, and here is your impasto look to the painting. And you, oop, I didn't mean to move that. <laughs> hate doing that when I do that. 
Okay. Um, what you can do here on the emboss, and I sort of just lost the control here. Where'd it go? Um, the image properties comes up. And where I'm going to undo that um, um, boss, and I'm going to bring that in there again. Here we go. Now I've got my embossed property, so I'm going to zoom in on that. And I want you to show you that you can control the emboss even. If you want to, you can take it off of the color, and now you have the gray emboss, and you can see the whole thing is there. Let's put the color back on because we want that. And now we have depth of emboss. So we can make this deeper. And of course, I'm going to exaggerate it for you. Let's go to four. And let's pick up the effect here. So it's going to be much stronger. And we can invert it. You see everything goes down instead of up. So I'm going to bring this back down to the two. And I'm going to bring this one back down some. And I think that's about enough embossing because I'm going to do something else when we're done with this and bring it into Photoshop. So this is really, really interesting, all the things you can do with this. And I, I'm just loving the fact that we can play with those brushes. I mean, I, I think that is really, really interesting and it's gonna make a whole change in how you decide to do things. Now, I do have this as a fairly low resolution so that I could show it on the internet. Um, if I did not have it low, it would certainly take longer for this to render. So I just went ahead and I rendered this painting. And let me just see. Yeah, we did keep the embossing. Okay, great. And I'm going to go to File, Save As. And it's a JPEG. I'm going to make sure it's at the highest. We'll call it Venice Violin. Okay, I'm going to go save. All right, and I'm, I'm going to open up Photoshop. And I had a painting in here from before, but I want to use uh, the one that we just did. And I'm going to go to File, Open, and let me just swing over here and grab that Venice. And it should be Venice Violin. Okay, let's bring that up. And you can see I have all my Nick filters here. Um, people always ask me what I use the most. And I basically use three things the most. I use all my Nick filters. They are, they are primary. Um, I don't think I'm going to need it on this one because I'm going to be doing something else. I wanted you to see the close-up of the embossing. And, of course, I use all my Topaz Lab filters. So I've got those fully loaded. But what we're going to do today is we're going to use Lucius Pro. And I'm going to show you what this powerful software can do. It looks very simple, but it's not as simple as it looks. So I'm going to show you Lucius Pro. And... I really, it took me a little while to learn this program. <laughs> when you see how simple it is, you're just going to go, duh, I can't believe this was so simple. So it does everything all the other Lucius programs does. You just have to know the settings. But this is what it does the most and what I'm enjoying about it. First, you come over here, click on split channels, click off display composite image. And now you will have a black and white. Highlight the red. Bring your slider on enhanced detail down until it looks like you have a better black and white image. It's not so gray. So do that for red. Now go to green. And you can see the green is much, much grayer. So I'm going to bring this down. And now I have a better clarity image. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. And I can see better clarity again. Now let's go to blue. And the blue doesn't look too bad. Um, there's your, your preview if you wanted to see what your color is starting to look like. I'm going to go ahead and bring this blue down a little bit. And let's see if we get a change here. Not too much of a change. A little bit more. There we go. I can see my whites are whiter now. And the blacks are blacker. Now turn on your display composite image. And there is the new image. And I'm going to back this up a little bit. 
Okay, here is before I added Lucius and after I added Lucius. And you can see how much more brilliant the colors are. Now, of course, if I wanted to, we'll zoom in again for a moment. I could also play with the um, smoothing detail. Let's just do that just to show you dramatically. See the details getting smoothed out. Here we go some more. Uh, I can play with the mix with the original image and I'll see what's happening there, how that's working. Uh, assign original image color. But the bottom line is that what I wanted was what I got here. I'm going to take this off. And it was dull and now it's bright. And I'm going to go OK and it's going to go ahead and process this. And actually, it did it so fast uh, on this size. Here it is. Zoom in. Undo Lucius, and it looks like it has a gray cloud over it. And redo Lucius, and I've got brilliant colors. I've got great edges. And when I fit this on screen, I actually have a really dynamic painting here. And of course, I would go in and I would do some of the details now, and I would finish this up and bring back some edges and it, it's just this software is just making it so easy and it's making it so much fun and creating things that I haven't even thought of creating yet and I think that's the fun of creating art is that you just follow along the process so I hope you enjoyed this I'll go back here to post workshop pro edition because that's what this was really about is creating these lessons in this so that you can start experimenting and get started in this program faster. And don't forget your properties and preview. That's what's really important over here is the properties and preview. And I thank you for um, joining me for these lessons. I've been having a lot of fun doing them for you. And don't forget to use the codes here in the blog post because you will definitely save some money and you'll get the best price you can possibly get on it. And uh, I've also provided a Lucius code and that also will save you, I think, on the Lucius Pro 6, I think it saves you $70. Thank you.